So the strategy of Zerto is actually twofold without giving every competitor a complete insight into what we're doing. One, as you've seen from the features that we're adding, that we're not only expanding disaster recovery use cases, we're starting to address data protection use cases and allowing you to get more value from your disaster recovery. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're also expanding what we call the concept of the Zerto Cloud Continuity Platform. And this is also, it's not just a platform, it's the strategic goal of Zerto that you've seen today, VMware, Hyper-V, we're adding Azure. Once we do fail back from these, then you're gonna be able to do the intra-cloud replication between Azure to AWS, AWS to Azure. What next is uh, on the horizon is we're also looking at KVM, so as Jen just said, but one of the biggest challenges we have is, is not just which flavor of KVM, but which management stack on top of it. And so what we were looking to do with you guys in the room, because I've, I've read a couple of posts around you know, different flavors of OpenStack, is actually turn it back to you guys and say, if you were Zerto in 2017, which next on-premise hypervisor and management stack would you add and why? And just to give you a bit of, you know, if we go back to the start of the presentation and we go back to June 2011 or whenever the first tech field day that we did is, this will be factored into our plans. This does directly affect our roadmap because we're not a VMware. We are still a startup in some regards in terms of being able to be agile and flexible. And therefore, I'd like to open it up and anybody's opinion on what next. Nutanix and scale computing. <laughs> My rent is. Bare metal. Bare metal, wow. You're switching all over to KVM on bare metal? So you when you say- a whole bunch of PhDs? <laughs> so when you say Nutanix, that would be their uh, Acropolis? Yeah. Acropolis. Mm -hmm. So that, that's actually a, a, good, uh, a good one to suggest. We have had multiple conversations with those guys. And the, the interesting thing is trying to get hard figures on the number of Nutanix customers using Acropolis. Uh, I don't know from what you've seen, but it, it the might... The number is big. There is no problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Uh, it's it's a, the best numbers. They have all the good words. I suppose the interesting thing with Nutanix is they have their own replication engine built in. Yeah. Uh, to the cloud. But with no, no DR to the cloud, though. That's it, yeah. And that actually, it's, it's consistent not only between the hyper-converged appliance vendors, it's actually all the storage startups as well, where we partner with all of them. And the one thing you, that's interesting you'll see is if they're just selling one, then Zerto's their best friend because now they can sell into that environment. If they're selling two, then it's only if the customer needs yeah. some of the features we have the way we might get introduced. But we do work with them very well. And for one thing that I'm sure you can appreciate for us is that it's very much driven by the number of people that will actually use it and the demand out there. So you would rate that above KVM? Well, or normal KVM, because it, it's it it a, a flavor of KVM, isn't it? Nutanix has its own replication and sort of DR stuff, but K, you know, KVM doesn't have great backup solutions for it. Yep. That, that's where I was more thinking, seeing you heading towards the backup route as well. Um, uh, two birds with one, yeah, but, two birds with one but the Nutanix replication is just Nutanix to Nutanix, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. So we still need to go cloud. Well, it, well, Nutanix does to AWS and Azure, but I think just as a just as a backup, you can't do anything can't, with it there. Yeah, you can't well, spin it's, them up. It's still not Nutanix running yes. inside of them. So. Yeah. yeah, it's not just a storage um, thing. So one thing we, we do get asked a lot about is KVM and, and OpenStack. And usually the first question I ask in reverse is, oh, are you using it? And quite often the response is no, but we're thinking about it. And so for you guys, where would you rate the progress of OpenStack? Um, who, who's actually used it or seen it implemented in any environments? Anyone? I mean, we're not using it, all, but I know um, managed service providers and cloud providers, which you are targeting with the, with the scale you can do, mm -hmm. are definitely looking at, uh, in fact, if not already using OpenStack. Yeah. And going forward, it's, it's had a rocky start because it's got, has too many different projects that are all uh, bundled together. But as time goes on, those projects will settle down and coalesce against more, uh, more things. And cloud providers, I don't think, want to spend the money with VMware anymore. Yeah. 
So it is that the predominant driver is the VMware tax? That and, and having that the orchestration part of, so I mean the, the KVM part of OpenStack is just the, the, the hypervisor, but you know other cloud providers are also wanting to use the, uh, have, having a, a developer friendly API ecosystem, uh, which OpenStack is more than uh, a pure VMware. Okay. So the group consensus is KVM and OpenStack or the Nutanix flavor of KVM? I would say OpenStack, not Nutanix. And OpenStack, yeah. not any of the other variants or CloudStack or anything? No, I think OpenStack is pretty clearly the dominant player there. Yeah. 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 For, for now, I think, yeah. But it's, um, I think we're going to see like DCOS and Mesosphere and, mm. and all yeah, the okay. yeah. orchestration tooling sure. on top of it. Uh, yeah. Becoming more popular. On top. But, but on, on, top. Top. on top. Yeah, that's it. Not on, no, 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 mm. not on top of. Instead of OpenStack. Oh, yeah. Not necessarily on top of. Sorry, yeah. No, yeah. it completely instead of. So one alternative that I, I want to table for you that we're also thinking of is from a Zerto perspective, we are writing data via a VM and our driver, and we're creating VMs and attaching disks and powering them on. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that. You're so far behind, you've got to get that all into containers next week. So we'll, <laughs> I, we'll come back to that subject and good segue. But if you're just doing that, why do you necessarily even need to interact directly with a management server? Could you not just interact directly with the different flavors of KVM and then expose the APIs to say, do whatever you want on top, and then it can be a project, you can put it into whatever stack you want. What's your opinion on that? If I'm running, if I'm running OpenStack, I have, then that orchestration is to run everything. Yep. Not, and having, a you know restored VM just pop up that requires me to go do something outside my normal workflows isn't worth it. And would you think it would be fair to say that if you are the scale and type of uh, enterprise or cloud that's using OpenStack, if we just give you APIs, you can then consume them because you're already going to be quite heavily vested to get OpenStack running at that scale anyway? No. No? No. So it would have to be out of the box? Anyone else? I, th I think yeah, but the, open the providers up. just open want an API. So the, uh, well, he said I it. completely agree with opening up. Yeah. But in my experience, if you just say, well, here's the APIs, good luck, mm -hmm. you're going to have adoption problems. So make, make sure you open up and give like examples yep. or pre thought out workflows, et cetera, et cetera. I agree. And uh, it's actually, it's the same problem we had with our REST API today, yeah. even in a VMware environment is you know, in multiple different Zerto user groups, it was a very small number that said they were actually consuming it versus the people who said, I want to consume it. So that links back to the, the white paper that I refer, referenced earlier, where it is a series of around 20, 30 different examples of how to consume that API in a VMware environment. And I agree, we should definitely do the same for uh, KVM. So that is more than likely going to be the strategy, uh, I'll be honest, because we can't fully commit to any one specific platform until it really does have the, the breadth that, for example, a vCenter and VMware does today. But to the future, what, what else are we looking at and what are we looking towards protecting? Well, a lot of customers out there, they're already using a hybrid cloud strategy because look at Office 365 or Salesforce. There is a huge amount of data in there and that is just as important for many organizations as to how you protect it. Yes, they're not VMs in the traditional sense, but if you can use the same platform to protect all of the data from that and just have a copy that you could substantiate in some form or another or restore from one of the different cloud services, is that of interest protecting Office 365, protecting all of your data in Salesforce? Uh, you're not how I want to protect Office 365. No? And what about Salesforce? I, I, want, to use, I want to use backup of fire, spanning backup and have that protected as the applications that it is, not as underlying infrastructure and volumes and crap. That's fine. And it, yeah, I'm, bu I'm buying an application as a service. I want to protect it as an application because that's what I'm buying. Mm -hmm. What if your future is to move it back on premises because this how as are a you service stuff is just How are bad. you going to back up something Salesforce and get it back in your own you environment? How, how are you going to do that? Yeah, I, 
Because what? The answer is because the not. reason the reason I'm backing up Office 365 is because enterprise backup is different than solution provider backup. Mm -hmm. Solution providers back up their applications so that if they screw up, they can restore. Yep. Enterprises back up data in applications so that if the users screw up, they can restore. Mm -hmm. And so what I need for Office 365 is not, oh my god, Office 365 went down, now I can bring up an exchange server in AWS. I need the vice president who's been using deleted items for storage and yep. his data disappeared to bring back the, and swear to God the truth, I once did a 50 grand consulting gig to restore one $4 million email where, nice. where a client had extended an advertising agency's contract by three months and then the guy who extended it was gone and they refused to pay millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And that email, it was now 120 days, which was past the retention and the email was gone. I had to go find it. That's what I want backup of. Office 365 for, I, not I, so that I can get an, a, an EDB that's the Exchange database. Totally agree. So as part of protecting that, it is going to have to be at the granular level using the journaling technology of being able to pull out an individual mailbox item or an entire mailbox and restore it directly into the production. And that will be the primary use case because I, I'll be honest, the idea of having to try and build an Exchange server on-prem to substantiate Office 365, it, it won't even work anyway. No. So, <laughs> it, that's all we can do. We can only do the granular recovery of the items. We definitely can't create uh, an on-premise exchange server, but in this circumstance of Salesforce, there is potentially some things we could do around mapping that data and bringing it in databases. But at this point, all I'm saying is that this is our strategic view of where we want to go in the future of not only protecting on-premise, but when you have new companies where all the consuming is SaaS, and they, you know, the idea of going out and buying kit and doing applications on premise is going away. Yes, it's not going to go away in the next five to ten years, but any company that doing what we do needs to have a long-term view of what you're doing here, how you're going to enable people to protect that from one interface, and also how you're going to address and protect new use cases and technologies like containerization and Docker. Back to a previous point. Now, right now, of course, we could be very cheeky and say, well, if you put uh, Docker inside a VMware VM, then Zerto can protect it. But as you know, that's a bit of a stopgap and a fudge. And you know, yes. The thing is, you, I mean, from a Docker and container perspective, you're not going to be backing up and replicating containers. The whole container management system is going to, that's just built in. Exactly. So from our point of view, it might just be orchestrating the components and you're only going to use Zerto's replication for the static data that's still in a database somewhere. Docker itself is more than likely, everything in Docker is stateless, therefore there's nothing to replicate in the instances themselves, just merely the configuration and then provide the orchestration around it. So all I can say to you is that our, our CTO is one of the biggest uh, Docker obsessed uh, people in the world that I know. And so from our CTO office where they're running a lot of, you know, projects for what we're going to be doing in two to three years time, this is definitely on our roadmap. So when customers ask us, what are we doing with Docker? Again, yes, we turn it back to them, but we say, what would you actually want us to do anyway, considering it's stateless? I suppose your, the concerns which you're quite candid in bringing here is every infrastructure company, as on-premises infrastructure moves to the cloud, what do those infrastructure companies continue to provide? Yeah. And yeah, backup is one of them, but you know, disaster recovery is, but even analytics and that kind of thing is all, all moving to different places. And the, the other really interesting thing, and we see it both with Amazon and Azure, and uh, earlier this year I, I did quite a few of the Amazon events uh, down in, uh, in APAC, and they're continuously pushing people and pricing the service in such a way to get you out of using VMs and instances and get you to using their dedicated service, which funnily enough is still running a VM in an instance, you just can't manage it and they price it competitively. And the reason they want to do that is Great one reason alone. Create lock-in. Yeah. Exactly. So one thing that I think mean, we're going to have a, a challenge, is, especially when we do cross <coughs> public cloud replication, is encouraging people to maintain their applications in the construct of a VM, which in the public cloud is essentially a container that allows you to get out of that cloud provider and run from another cloud service and not be locked in. Yeah, How do the cloud providers look at you then? Because 
that's not what they want to do, right? So good, good point. And actually, there is a big, there is a difference in strategy, and and it's really interesting to see in, in 2016, and uh, maybe partly because of the new regime at Microsoft, that they are fully open. You can have APIs to put data in. You can have APIs to put data out. They just want you to use Azure in any which way possible. But for all the cloud providers, I can't say the same. It's Microsoft 3.0 or SQL on Linux or whatever is next. Yeah. Bash on Windows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the strategic goal of Zerto, and, and we do actually have a lot of customers who buy on this fact today. The, but go on, sorry. They buy on this. Okay, I understand that. But if you ask further there, what is their initial, what is their initial goal and what is their ultimate goal? Will yeah. they go fully to the cloud? Will they go... What, what do actually, you see the customers? It, it's actually a complete mix. And it can even go down to the like per application owner or per department level, where it, it, there's not really many companies that can say we are 100% doing this. They already have a mix, and sometimes, as I said at the start, it's by a shadow OT. You've already got five developers using instances in AWS that you didn't even know about. It's just they can put it on a credit card, and there's there's no issue. So the one thing that we're building here is just this one holistic view where you're going to have a complete mix. I can't say for sure, and I don't think anyone can, that in 10 years' time, you're still not going to have huge SQL servers of all your primary data running on VMware in your local data center on all flash arrays running 5 billion IOPS by that point in time. I don't know. But what we can say for sure is that it is going to be a mix, and Zerto is going to be the glue that connects all of these together to protect and restore the data and allow the mobility and remove the lock-in because yesterday we removed the lock-in from the hypervisor and the storage, but going forward into 2017 and beyond, we'll remove the lock-in between the clouds and the cells and be the glue that connects it all together. I, we had two customers, two CIOs come and talk to a bunch of the Zerto people so that we, people could ask them questions. And one of them says his future, had said very adamantly that his future is to basically work himself out of a job right, that everything would be in the cloud, and the other one said very clearly that will never happen and it will all be on-premise for as long as he, it, as he runs the data center. So yeah. I think that's where we are right now, where you have those two very different visions, and <laughs> they see five and ten years very, very differently. I so big drive towards APIs, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can hook everything into that. Yeah, and that, that's also a key strategy is we are trying to develop an API first. It is a big culture change, as I'm sure you uh, can appreciate. But there is definitely in every single new iteration more and more APIs. And that is also a key component of this because if you're going to connect all these systems, you can't, it, you know, yes, you've got a pretty interface, but you need to be able to automate it. Yeah. So together, that's the, the strategy of Zerto. That's what we're going to continue to push for as well as, I'll be honest, kicking ass in the on-premise world today of giving the best solution in the examples that we gave of the 20,000 VM environments, recovering from ransomware, recovering from the files from seconds before, enabling you to migrate and remove the lock-in between the hypervisors, and that's what we do, and thank you very much for coming today, guys. <laughs>